Hello and welcome to this Clementine overview. Clementine is a modern cross-platform free music player for OS X, Windows, Windows and many Linux distributions. You can download the player from clementine-player.org. Clementine has many interesting features that make this app a recommendable music player. It allows you to listen to local music from many different locations, whether it's a local computer or a computer connected via network. Other sources are the many different internet radio station directories like Icecast, Digitally Imported and Sky FM. The internet sources also include Gemendo, Magnatune, Spotify, Groovesharp and Last.fm, where Clementine can scrubble tracks to, by the way. Unlike other player apps, Clementine doesn't lock you in. You can also listen to and transfer tracks to and from virtually any MP3 player, including the iPhone and iPod. While the music is playing, you can explore more information about the artist with the built-in artist info. This feature allows you to read the biography or lyrics while your favorite music is playing. With the editing feature, it is easier to keep your music organized. You can choose to edit metadata by yourself or let Clementine do the hard work. It analyzes songs and downloads missing information such as covers, lyrics and other data. When your music folder is a mess, Simply use the Organize feature to sort music automatically according to metadata, such as an artist folder, followed by all the albums by this artist, or keep all music sorted by year. It's all up to you. Clementine supports many different audio formats. Convert songs easily to your preferred format. There are also other features you might want to check out as well. On OS X and Linux it uses native notifications for track changes and other things. The app can be controlled remotely using a Wii or different controller. In the next couple of minutes we are now showing most of these features in logical order, so you can start using Clementine right away. When you launch Clementine for the first time, it's going to ask where you have your music. In case you didn't see the dialog, in case you didn't see the dialog, click on click here to add some music. Currently we don't have any music folders in our library. To add a new folder, you simply click on add new folder. And on this demo machine I have already prepared a folder containing some music. So I click choose. And from the preference dialog, you can get a glimpse of what Clementine else is able to do. For now though, I'm just clicking OK. We can add songs to new playlists easily by dragging them from the library to the playlist area. You can also add new songs by right clicking them and choose append to current playlist. Handling playlists really shouldn't be that difficult for you. You can rearrange music, delete individual songs and add new songs, just like that. When it comes to smart playlists though, these are not as easy to understand. First of all, let's create a new smart playlist. So you right click in the smart playlist area and choose new smart playlist. The power of smart playlists is that their contents change dynamically. You can, for instance, Set up a smart list where the artist matches your favorite artist. For instance, I choose Skrillex. This way you can easily create a new playlist with all songs from one artist. If you ever add new songs from that artist to the library, they are going to show up in that list automatically. You can also build more complicated playlists by adding new search terms. Our current playlist could possibly be improved by containing only songs from our favorite artist that have a higher rating. So we can easily listen to all songs from that artist. What I find nice here is that Clementine shows a small preview at the bottom of the window. This way you can easier figure out whether certain conditions actually matches songs in the library. Now my smart playlist here doesn't match anything so I just remove the second search term and click continue to create this smart playlist. Again I click continue and name this smart list Skrillex. Now I just need to click done and I have the smart playlist in my library. So this has been about playlists and smart playlists already. You've also learned how to initialize your library with a music folder. But what if you want to listen to some music coming from the internet? This is also fairly easy. Clementine has built-in support for many of the most popular internet radio stations. In the left hand sidebar simply click internet and you're going to see a list of all the different, let's call them, internet radio networks. Icecast has stations listed by the genre. Now, my problem is I can't actually turn on these stations because of German broadcast regulations, but once you find a station that sounds good for you, 
Just double click and the station starts to play. I got the audio muted because as I said, that's a big deal here. Anyway, you may recognize Last FM, Groove Shark and Spotify are also in the list. If you go back to the settings of Clementine and scroll down to the internet providers, you can see that you can provide your login data for Last.fm, Grooveshark, Spotify and Magnetune. Last.fm has some additional options that allow you to scrubble tracks that you are listening to. Very, very nice. To wrap up this section, let me show you how you can also listen to files not in your library or on your iPod. You can do that by clicking files in the sidebar. There you're going to see a file browser. You can browse to every folder just by double clicking. You can browse to every folder including mounted network volumes and start playing without adding songs to the library. But you can add these songs to any playlist shown on the right hand side. Lastly, you can also listen to your iPod songs by clicking devices. In my case I don't have an iPod so I can't actually show you how this works but it works similar to what you've just seen. Every music source that is shown on the left, a song, a file, a station or songs on a device can be dragged to the right and added to a playlist. So the next thing that I want to show you is song info and artist info. If a song is playing, for instance Kill Everybody by Skrillex, you can just click on song info and the song's info is going to load. The information that is showing up here is how many plays it has on Last.fm and the lyrics if this song has any. But let's move forward to the artist info. You can click on artist info and the artist's info is going to load in the sidebar as well. In the top you have some pictures, some tags related to this artist, similar artists, the biography loaded from Wikipedia and if I scroll down to the bottom you're also gonna see a list of other sources where I can view information about this particular artist. Editing a song's information is simple and straightforward. All you have to do is right click a song and click edit track information. In the new window you're going to see some things you can change in the summary. This summary gives you an overview of the file itself like the length and file size. In the Edit Tags tab, however, you can edit the metadata assigned to that song. You can change the title, the artist, album and even give it a comment. You may have seen in the Summary tab already, to change the cover art and rating you need to go back to the Summary. The Summary is also where you can load in a cover file you have downloaded, you have downloaded or scanned by yourself. Click Change Cover Art and then choose the option corresponding to what you're trying to achieve. This is all fine and good, but sometimes you might want to let the app do these things for you. In the end, that's why we have these machines, right? So to download a song's metadata, let me manipulate this song first. Let's say I have screwed up the title of this song. The retrieve tags from the internet, simply click on Complete Tags Automatically sends the song to Music Brains, which is a music identifying service. Once the search has finished, it shows you the information you can now apply to this song. It shows you the original tags you had in the library already, or you can choose the suggested tags from Music Brains. If you're happy with the result, just click on OK and the metadata is applied. Now all you have to do is click Save and the tags are saved to the file. With Clementine you can also download missing cover art. Simply go to the menu bar, click on Tools, Cover Manager. Here you see a list of all your music with and without covers. To fetch missing covers, click the button Fetch Missing Covers. Covers are downloaded and applied automatically. Once done, click Close and you now see that the Skrillex album finally has a cover art. been really simple. So in this last part let's check out two more features, convert and organize. This feature allows you to convert all or just a couple of your songs to a format that you can transfer to a particular device or to a particular format. In case a device doesn't support the format your songs are currently in, just click Tools, Transcode Music 
and add a couple of songs you have on your machine. I simply add these five or so songs, click on open, and on the bottom of this window you can simply choose whichever codec you want to use to export. In my case I ch simply choose mp3 and then click start transcoding. You can then add these songs to other devices who only support a certain format or add them back to your library. Clementine also allows you to organize your music library, which means it's able to shuffle around the files in your library physically on the hard drive. Because as of right now, if I switch to the finder, you see that our Clementine library folder only contains a flat list of all songs in our library. To start reorganizing your library, just right click on a song in your library and organize files. In this new dialog, where it says naming options, you can choose how you want your songs to be organized. Now, don't worry, you don't have to remember and type all this stuff in by hand. Let's say we want to get rid of this organizing structure. So I select everything and hit backspace to delete. Then from the insert menu, I choose, let's say, artist, followed by a slash symbol, because that's how OS X determines subfolders. Simply by adding this placeholder to the naming options, you see how the preview on the bottom of the window already updated its view. Now let's add in another placeholder, let's say album. And what we have now is that all our songs will be organized first by artist, then into a subfolder named by the album. Now, additionally, let's say we want to keep all artists organized by their initials, which means Aerosmith is going to be in A and Prodigy is going to be in P. So let's first add in another slash symbol here in front and choose artist initial from the insert menu. You see on the bottom the preview updated again and now shows all songs are first going to be sorted by their artist initials, which is in this case K, then the artist's name and then the album name. Now that's it. All you have to do now is click OK. And now when I switch back to the finder you see that this song has now been sorted into a subfolder named K, Adam K. Cello, where now this song lives in. To reorganize all the other songs, simply select them all and repeat the same process. As you've seen, Clementine is a really powerful and open application that gives you a lot of freedom to organize and convert your songs. You also get a lot of additional information about your artists, your songs, your music in general, with the song info and artist info. If you like this tutorial, please check out freemacsoftware.com for more free apps and please leave a rating in the iTunes store. It really helps. Thanks. Bye.